JBN, we keep you informed. The day Bob Marley died. Please remember to subscribe, like, share. Leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items. It was Monday, May 11, 1981. Edward Siaga was the sitting Prime Minister in Jamaica. Following a landslide victory at the polls seven months earlier, his party, the Jamaica Labour Party, swept to power. The leader of the opposition was Michael Manley, and the President of the United States was Ronald Reagan. That week, the people in the UK were listening to Stand and Deliver by Adam and the Ants, which was in the top five. In the US, people were jamming to Betty Davis' Eyes by Kim Cranes. Stephen King's novel Dance Macabre was on the best sellers list, and Possession was one of the most viewed movies released in 1981. None of this was important on the day to the majority of Jamaicans and reggae lovers worldwide when the confirmation came that reggae king Bob Marley had died. As the 36-year-old superstar was flying home from West Germany to Jamaica, his vital functions worsened. After landing in Miami, Florida, he was taken to the Cedars of Lebanon Hospital in Miami, now University of Miami Hospital, for immediate medical attention where he died with his family by his side. It is widely reported that his final words to his eldest son Ziggy were money can't buy life. In September the previous year, Marley had collapsed while jogging in New York's Central Park. Following tests, it was confirmed that cancer, originally found in one of his toes, had spread throughout his body and he was forced to end his most ambitious U.S. tour. Marley sought treatment at the Bavarian Clinic of Dr. Joseph Essels, where he received an alternative diet partly based on avoidance of certain foods, drinks, and other substances. After eight months there, an alien Marley boarded a plane for Jamaica but did not make it home. Music insider Clyde McKenzie was just out of high school on that day in May 1981. He recalled clearly what happened when news broke that Bob Marley had passed. I was with my friends next door. It was a spot where we hung out and I learned a lot about Jamaican music. I recall hearing this deluge of music being played on Jamaican radio. It was endless Marley. I was hearing music that I never knew existed and have never been played on radio like this, he recalled. Mackenzie noted that constant focus on the music of Marley helped create an even greater awareness of his greatness. At the time, the government owned the JBC, Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation Radio and TV. They were able to control the narrative. This determined the response of the public to the death of this great Jamaican. Yes, many of us were aware that he was an enormous figure, but how the government controlled the message showcased his greatness and importance, said Mackenzie. Marley received a state funeral at the National Arena on May 21 which combined elements of Ethiopian Orthodox and Rastafari traditional rites. Siaga delivered the eulogy and stated, His voice was an omnipresent cry in our electronic world. His sharp features, majestic looks and a prancing style are vivid etching on the landscape of our minds. Bob Marley was never seen. It was an experience which left an indelible imprint with each encounter. Such a man cannot be erased from the mind. He is part of the collective consciousness of the nation. Since his death, Marley has been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Given a star on the celebrated Walk of Fame in Hollywood, his album Exodus was named Album of the Century by Time magazine and his single One Love was declared Anthem of the Millennium by the British Broadcasting Corporation BBC. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.